Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'll, I promise you that I'll finish on time so that you can all get lunch. So. Well, as, as Rod said, um, I'm looking at all the small cats around the world, about 30 species, depending upon how we count. And uh, I'm a member of these various organizations. I'd like to thank my numerous partners, including um, the Rare Species Fund, Wildcat Education and Conservation Fund, which is Robin Barb Dicely's fund, Christine, and uh, the Mohammed bin Zayed Species Conservation Fund that funds uh, all conservation projects around the world from fungi to great whales. And I recommend which cat projects get funded. Well, why small cats? There are six IUCN Red List endangered wild cats. Two are big. One is the snow leopard that we've just heard about, and four are small. Which, in my opinion, the flat-headed cat is the most endangered cat on the planet. And it's the one where we have virtually no studies and no funding going into it. Equally as endangered as, as, uh, as any of the others. IUCN red list endangered. Here are some of the other small cats. There are 20 cats that are less than the size of your house cat. And virtually all of them are, are neglected. That is, we don't have very many studies of any of them. The world awaits the first studies of many of these small cats. The weenia on the right I studied for my PhD in Chile, and I, I did the first studies ever of that cat. What do we do? Well, we support the efforts, uh, the conservation efforts for all small cats around the world, and I, I support colleagues and, and students who want to work on small cats. These are always one-ofs with very little funding. So they work alone, and they, don't, they don't, are not part of any uh, big organization, and they, they can't make a living off of any of these studies. They can't do them full time. Uh, my focal species are the four most endangered cats, the Andean cat, bay cat, fishing cat, and flat-headed cat. And you, you know from, uh, from WCN and from the numerous conferences that you've attended that uh, the Andean Cat Alliance was created as a WCN partner a full-fledged partner to, to look at the conservation needs, to address the conservation needs of the Andean cat. Check one off my list as now we have an organization dedicated to saving the Andean cat. Um, pursuing them op uh, opportunistically, uh, the fishing cat was next. This is an Andean cat that we captured in Bolivia at 16,000 feet uh, and followed her around with the radio collar. This was the first one that was ever done. It was published in Science. So we can publish these interesting studies of these really rare cats in the, in the world's top journals. Here's a picture of a margay. I threw in some pictures of these small cats to show you that there are small cats that can do uh, what, what some of the big cats can't do. Show me a tiger that can do that. Here she is up in the trees, they're arboreal. Here's the Andean cat that I referred to before. When I took this picture, I knew what I had. I was no more than six feet away from this cat. And the reason is they don't show any fear of people. Here's the weenia that I studied for my PhD with a lizard in her mouth. This is a full-grown female, a melanistic. So probably half the size of your house cat. Um, I work with students and colleagues all around the world on small cats. I'll show you some pictures uh, ag again in a few minutes. So I'll run through my colleagues first. Uh, this is uh, Anya Barskova. She works on palace cats in Russia. Beautiful little cat. There, we're putting some camera traps out. This is what happens when you work there. It's about 30 degrees below zero. There's what the landscape looks like. Here's my colleague in Uganda working on African golden cat. Gangaregmi with palace cats in Nepal. He got the first pictures ever taken of palace cats in Nepal only recently. I work with a student, uh, Tashi Dendup in Bhutan, 
who works on clouded leopards and marble cats. Now I'll turn it over to Ashan. Okay. All yours. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, this is my time to talk about the fishing cat conservation um, in Sri Lanka. So this is the fishing cat, the one of most endangered and least studied small cat species in the world. And uh, they have a medium-sized body and grayish olive green, green uh, fur coat covered with identical uh, black color stripes. And also the sp also spots, and as the name implies, uh, they usually associated with the porridge habitats from uh, coastal areas to hill country, normally in, our, in Sri Lanka. And they are territorial, nocturnal, and solitary animals. And like no other cats, they can swim, they can dive, and also they can fish. As you seen on the screen, uh, they can be found in South and Southeast Asia, uh, but unfortunately, uh, they, are, they were already extinct from a uh, few countries like Java and these sites. And as a team in uh, Sri Lanka, we are working on initiating conservation practices and uh, the monitoring their distribution and ecology in uh, hill country and its associated areas. And, uh, but why they are so important? Why people talk about them? They are the top predators in some habitats, uh, and so they play a major role in balancing those ecosystems. And they are few in number, and they have a lot of traits. And we can also uh, call them as a flagship species, so we can initiate the conservation practices, focusing on them, and end up with conserving the whole habitat. And uh, in Sri Lanka, we monitor in them using uh, camera wraps, PAGMA sensors, and also from the scat analysis. And also we do talk to people, uh, to people who live among the cats. And when we usually ask from, uh, from about this cat from them, they normally they said, uh, yeah, we know this cat. This is the one who killed our cats, killed our chickens. And last month uh, we lost like four chickens because of them. How, how can we get rid of them? So, well, guess what coming from those thoughts, those thinkings? Threats. Oh. Threats. The habitat loss uh, due to deforestation and fragmentation is the, is the other main threat they face uh, throughout the Sri Lanka. And these are some recent uh, incidents happened in Sri Lanka, and we already got uh, these uh, marked fragmented areas uh, as a forest. So road kills, it holds the highest reputation for fishing cat kills throughout, uh, throughout the region. And we gave a solution for that. Uh, I will show about that in a minute. So also people killing them for flesh, fur, and also to use as indigenous medicine, uh, like uh, asthma. And they're using uh, animal snares, uh, poisons, electrocuted fences, traps uh, to, kill, to kill them. And luckily, we were able to uh, cut this cat and let him loose. Cut. We cut the snare and let him go to the wild. So most of uh, the above problems are caused uh, according to the misidentification. Uh, normally, pe people think these cats are as a harmful species, like, you know, sometimes uh, the leopards attacking people, and so they think them as uh, leopard kittens, so they usually kill those cats because of the misunderstand. But we can stop them. We can educate these people, and if we can make them proud to have this cat on their backyard, and that will be our final achievement. So we gave a try in Sri Lanka for that. We are able to conduct uh, youth camps, awareness rising programs for school children, and also have them done, uh, done with some annual events like youth camps for 
university students who will be the leaders on this field. And as a, and we already published our booklet about the fishing cat uh, and also the wild cats in Sri Lanka were used as a material for young education. And we gave us, we trying to give a solution for rod kills by uh, implementing the rod signs uh, around the most crucial rod kills areas along with the, this information board. And this is the uh, first time that fi uh, Fishing Cat got their own road sign from throughout the world. And uh, we rescued those kittens with the help of a uh, few colleagues. Along with that, uh, we built the enclosure to keep the wounded cats and also to treat them and relocate them to the Original, they are original habitats, and this is the biggest uh, rehab center in the South and Southeast Asia. Uh, from uh, all my work, I able to develop a distribution map for fishing cats, and I hope to use this as in future conservation of fishing cats. So uh, we need people like you to save, to help us to save this cat from the extinction. So I'm uh, heading back to Jim. Thank you. Ashan is much too modest. He uh, found a, uh, a mother that was road killed and he rescued those two kittens and I told him it would be extremely difficult to save them. Very few people can save these kittens because they don't know what to do. And it was Rob and Barb Dicely who told him what to do via email he followed their instructions precisely, and he saved those two cats. They still recognize him. <laughs> and we realized we needed an enclosure to put these road-injured uh, road cats and rehab them, and we decided that we needed the best facility there was in, in Southeast Asia. When I visited... Uh, uh, Ashan, I went to the uh, uh, Wildlife Rehab Center in Sri Lanka, just outside of Colombo, and there was a fishing cat in rehab there that was in a tomahawk trap that was half the size of this podium. And this was a rescue facility. And I wouldn't stand for it. We took that cat, we released it with a radio collar, um, and we decided we needed to build our own enclosure. We, we had zoos from all over the world contribute designs and we built it at cost three to four thousand dollars. So compared to cost of what we can do in Sri Lanka versus what we can do elsewhere, it's, it's big bang for a buck. Now we have BBC asking us if they can film within our enclosure because it's so realistic. That's what he's done. I told you he was a superstar. So here we are, the four most endangered cats, the Andean cat, there's a bay cat in uh, Borneo, uh, and uh, I'm spending a lot of time trying to get projects going for bay cats, uh, which is a very poorly known cat, endemic to Borneo. There's your fishing cat with an optimistic distribution. And this tiny little flat-headed cat whose distribution IUCN map is way off because it does, it's not found in half of those places. And we have no active conservation programs going for bay cat or flat-headed cat. So that's where I'm spending a lot of my time now is developing those conservation programs from nothing with, with very little money. Uh, to show you how bad it is, I made a, a graph of uh, wild cats on postage stamps. So this is postage stamps from all over the world. You know how we have cats like bobcats on a stamp, postage stamp. Okay, so for tigers, a tiger is on uh, the, the red or endangered cats. The red or endangered. So the far right green line are lions, and they're on over 900 postage stamps from around the world. Uh, tigers are on about 700 postage stamps from around the world. Our snow leopard is around 150 or 60 postage stamps from around the world. Now let's look at these small endangered cats. Fishing cat, less than 10 postage stamps. Flat-headed cat, six stamps. And I worked with the United Nations to put it on a stamp. And they did. Uh, 
Andean cat, four stamps. One from Bolivia, compliments of Lillian Vialba, and one from Chile that we met with the Chilean Postal Authority to get on a stamp. Bay cat, no stamps. Not a single poster stamp anywhere in the world. And what's the meaning of this? Well, here on this next slide you can see. These are publications including genetic studies of all the cats in the world. You don't need to read the bottom line that is the species name, but you can just look at it in terms of body weight. The line is on the right, the smallest cat in the world, Rusty Spotted, is on the left. And this is the amount of scientific information about all these cats. And as you, it's just, it could be a chart of body weight. As we go down in weight, there's less and less interest in any of these small cats. And the, the Weenia study down here and, and uh, flat-headed cat, bay cat, those are my publications and my colleagues' publications. That's it. That's all there is. And we've got to do better than that. Well, here's your take-home message. Charlie Knowles, the founder of WCN, that said that small cats have a small but dedicated following. I feel like I'm among the faithful. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Um, Ashan and I would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. And as promised, I won't keep you from lunch if you ask any of them. Thank you. <laughs>